Welcome back friends, this is Solomon Jagwe. I'm back with another quick insight and today we're going to be talking about the metahuman, yeah, it's a way, yeah, hello from the metahuman world. So then the new release uh, of the metahumans and uh, this is a 0 0.05, <laughs> no sorry 0 0.520. <laughs> So that is the new update uh, that has just been released by Epic Games. And I didn't even know that was a, a thing, but you can see some of the things that they've added, a technical uh, list of additions, uh, you get a hair, you get the, the UI, the head proportions. And uh, I mean, this is impressive because I mean, we've been waiting for a long time to get an update for the metahumans. And uh, you can see that uh, now you can color the hair, you know, like uh, dye the hair which is pretty cool, you know, like if you have like a, like a cyber punk kind of character, uh, this will really work. Now, when you change the hair, it impacts everything else. So let's go back here and go through the list. Uh, in the hair, you can see the increased hues, UI, there's some things that they've added, head proportions, makeup, body rigs, uh, and that's really gonna be helpful because of the tall <laughs> rigs that they've improved. And uh, also uh, clothing, some skinning updates for the shorts. Uh, there are some you know, presets in the rigging part. They've added a simpler rig, a uh, simple rig, face rig, and the performance improvements in the shader and the texture baking. So it looks like they're trying to imp make this as easy as possible to work with, especially when you're customizing it. Okay, let's go back over here. And uh, so the idea, we're just gonna, for start, gonna duplicate this character. Uh, because I don't want to, you know, mess up all these things that I've already uh, added, that I've already created. And uh, I've just modified one of the characters and I'm gonna, and as you can see, I've already downloaded one of them. That's the one that we're gonna be uh, working with in the Unreal Engine. And uh, this is for 4.27. There are some issues that people have been having of exporting those characters to 4.27. I'm gonna be able to walk you through that whole process uh, because it, it was bothering me that I wasn't able to send my characters to the uh, Unreal Engine 4.27. And it really is a, a setting that you have to fix, okay? So if I go back over here, uh, guys, just a quick note. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please spare a minute to subscribe. Uh, to my channel and hit that subscription rather when you subscribe hit that notification bell so you're alerted when i post a new video you know and uh, thank you for helping me to get to 8.11.6 thousand subscribers thank you to my patrons thank you so much for your support you guys make it possible for me to do that and for everybody else who has subscribed thank you thank you thank you so much we are growing day by day and I owe it all to you guys. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, <clears throat> if you're new to my channel, I always talk about, uh, you know, new uh, technology that's come up. Uh, for example, this one right here in um, in the Unreal Engine 5. So when you export one of these characters, uh, these are the original characters. These are the, the ones that are in the bridge, the human presets, for example. Those ones have not been updated yet. And so, but the ones that are in your custom human, meta human folder, those ones are automatically updated, I believe. Uh, because when I click on them, like when I go back to this project right here uh, and you download some of these, there's, there's a, an, a, like an alert that's gonna come up that asks you to replace, you know? So when you replace it, it's gonna be like, you're gonna get a notification in on the hold on a second yeah you get this notification right here that tells you that something has been downloaded but you, if you're trying to override it then you have to copy it from one folder to another you know and i think uh this they're definitely doing some things behind the scenes <laughs> even as we have been better testing this there's something that they're doing behind the scenes to improve these models okay and so that is a, a key thing that when you down, you, if you already have uh, models, metahumans that you've already created, they're gonna, there are changes that you need to be aware of and you need to replace those folders. So we're gonna go ahead and if, if, you, if you choose to create a brand new character, it's gonna already have those changes. But if you um, have something that's already pre-built, I mean, they've already built in the metahuman creator, then you're gonna definitely have to che check those uh, folders and replace the folders as indicated in this in uh, this notification right here. Okay, so uh, in 
the bridge right here. You can see a list of all my characters. I hope your like array of uh, actors is also growing. It's exciting to be able to create characters, <laughs> you know, create your own actors and actresses or actors overall uh, to tell our stories. I think this is really good. And I can't wait for more clothing to be added so we can dress up these uh, meta humans and be able to create our own stories. So going back to where, where am I? Sorry, for a second there, I got lost. Um, there's some things that I know that uh, are going to be added th later on. But for now, I mean, this is, it's a, a major update, you know, but I'm a little disappointed because <laughs> I was hoping to have some clothing in here. So I'm going to, I've duplicated this character so I don't destroy my original one. And you can see the, the uh, hair dye that they've added. And uh, if you go to pro this uh, the body uh, section, the, it has been changed to proportions. And when you click on that, uh, visually, I mean, once you stop playing the animation, you can see that they've added uh, head scale, you know. And I'm hoping that this can be changed so that when you scale the head, the neck also dynamically changes because it's kind of odd to have a small head on a thick neck, you know. But uh, that's one of the new additions that they've, uh, you know, put in uh, the Meta Human 0 0.50. 0 0.5.0 release okay so uh, that i'm hoping that uh, we get more dials to be able to control these characters so that the whole body can actually be changed not just the head scale you know and uh i don't know we'll see and um, I, this is still a work in progress and they're changing it even as we continue to work with it and so just be on the lookout like if you want to change your character head uh, if you want to set it back, just put zero and then export your character. So under tops, nothing new there really. Under bottoms, nothing new. Under shoes, nothing new yet. And then when you go to the head, um, still, I mean, the same thing, but up at the top, if you want to change, just click on the, the color swash and there are different colors that you can choose. And then when you click on custom, the enable hair dye if it comes disabled by default but when you enable it then you, you kicks you into the dye uh panel so when you click on that check it and then you're able to click on a color swatch and then you're able to adjust the hue the saturation and the value you know again i'm thinking cyberpunk you know kind of characters like when i if you add some cool glasses now the hairs on the the eyebrows and the eyelashes are can can also be adjusted, but you have to select the them individually. So for the eyebrows, you just click on the color again over here. Click on custom, enable that hair dye, and then you're able to change it. Now I don't know if I I would want to dye my eyebrow screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, uh, that's not my cup of tea but you can see the controls that you have you can use and adjust uh, the different uh, you know colors to match it so there you have it this is one of the additions in the the new metahuman then we go to eyelashes you can uh, under makeup uh, under blush there's some new you know improvements as well and at the lips some adjustments there that you can do under the eyes so overall, I mean, it's not like a big, big, big change per se, uh, but uh, you can see they are working behind the scenes to add, you know, these kind of controls and make it better. And and I can't wait for it to get to one point one, right? So that we can do even more customization, you know, because I would like to be able to control like individual teeth, you know, you know, things like that. And then under proportions, uh, again. These are things that I'm, I was really looking forward to, thinking that maybe they would have added something else. Uh, let me go ahead and name this a different, uh, maybe like a two, so that I don't overwrite the one that's already there. And so this is uh, um, under the auto, and you just click on face to go to the face, and then under studio, they've added, this used to not be visual, but uh, there's a lighting setups that to test for you to test the skin of this character and the lighting so you can see what the character looks like in different lighting setups. Now you can't export these light setups just yet. And so when I'm, I'm gonna add on the animation and play back. And then I'm gonna go to the bottom here and I can rotate the light setup. 
So it's a channel, it's an opportunity for you to see how the meta human is gonna, you know, look or react to different lighting setups. And this is cool. They look really, really <laughs> realistic. <laughs> it's amazing what uh, Epic Games has done with these characters. So we can go and check out uh, Portrait. That's pretty nice. Very, very cool. And then you can look at the eyes. My goodness. These characters are so intricate. It's so, so realistic. It's amazing, you know, because as a character creator, I mean, uh, modelers, you try to achieve that kind of level reali realism and here it is already done for you. So we have those different other, other different light settings and we can try it. Fireside. Right, and try out uh, split, and then let's try rotating the light setup, and uh, yeah, it looks awesome. And then the silhouette, so as you're shaping your character, and then outdoors, so you don't want to just test your characters out at a indoors. You want to be able to see what the character is gonna look outside. And this is really cool because the skin shader still looks really beautiful. And indoors, you can test that as well before you export. And as you're customizing the skin, and then in, in the studio, the one that's the default one, that's we start with. Uh, personally, I like looking at the indoor one. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it, it's it's cool, you know. And I'm here hoping again that uh, more and more updates are added. You know, I mean, we can... It's a it's a significant update. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> and so we'll close this for now. And one of the things that I, I've been thinking about is, you know, what else they're gonna keep adding, you know, as time goes on. And I'll put this link in the description of the, this video so you can check it out yourself. So these are the this is the tech list of the things that are, have have been added. Okay. And so get it get uh take time to look through and uh, see for yourself how this all works. But uh, overall, I think it's impressive what they've done. Uh, so there's the character, you can see it. And they say they've added extra time. So as time goes on, I think that time for download is gonna just go up because these characters are really, really intricate. You know, especially if you're downloading at 8K resolution, that is gonna be significant, all right? And uh, so this is the one that I've done. I already downloaded and we're gonna be able to take it to the Unreal Engine 4.27, okay? So this is an, the previous character that I have that I'm gonna be replacing. And then I'm gonna come over here and uh, click on the one that I want to send to the Unreal Engine 4.27. And that's ready to extend. But now the challenge has been that uh, we've been struggling with sending characters into the Unreal Engine 4.27, <laughs> you know? And uh, it, I used to get errors Whenever I would try to send the characters, but they, there's a really a quick fix in this. Uh, the reason is because of a setting in Quixel Bridge. So you, what you'd have to do to fix this issue is you go to Edit, go to Export Settings, and in the engine, the engine version, make sure you select 4.27. So by default, mine the reason I was having so much trouble was because it was set to 4.26. And uh, in the Unreal Engine 5, the, uh, the bridge is already in, incorporated in it. So that's why you don't see 5.0. So for 4.27, you have to select 4.27. And originally mine was 4.26. That's why I was having issues. <laughs> and also the path, the plugin path was wrong. So when you switch to 4.27, make sure you point it to the folder, the plugin folder where you, you have your uh, Unreal Engine 4.27 installed. That's where it will try to, that's where it will be able to install the correct plugin. Because if you don't, then that's where you're going to get those issues. And that's what I was having issues with. And so I hope that helps, guys. Make sure you select the correct engine version and the plugin location. And when you're ready, now you can go ahead and click on that uh, export icon for the, whichever character that you want, and it will work. But this is very crucial, guys. That's why I was also suffering. <laughs> I was like, is it not working? <laughs> it's broken. So when I click export now, you can see that it's working. Before I would get errors, but it has exported successfully. 
And now when I go to the Unreal Engine 4.27 and there's an error that is gonna show up, this one right here, and it says exporting this character will require you to update the common files. Please close UE and override the common files manually from that folder. So the Epic Games content folder that it has created is because that's where I have the path that uh, for any mega scans that I download, they go in that container, that uh, folder right there. So you, we have to go to that folder, browse to it, copy the common folder. And so I'll go ahead and uh, browse, file explorer, and bring it over uh, to this side once it comes up. And so in here, I can see Epic Games content, right? And I double, oh, double click on that, open it. Uh, let's scroll this, uh, just uh, scale it down so we can see more of that message. But that's also uh, wherever your, your, I guess your mega scans, whichever drive, it doesn't have to be E. Mine is E because that's where I save my mega scans content. And it's probably better to take a screen grab of this in case once you close the engine, you don't see it. So you have a reference to it, but you can see the path. So we need to go at for, for the Epic Games content folder and download it. And then, <clears throat> sorry. So let's go to download it. Double click on that and browse to the DHF folder. Then go all the way down. And I think that's gonna be KZU. KZU, <laughs> KZU, 8K, and then the asset meta humans over here. Double click on that and then common folder. So we need to copy the common folder and Maconde Boy folder because that's the name of the character. So, and then put them in this common folder on where my project is. So I'll go ahead and copy that, minimize it, and click OK. Now I can close. Uh, first of all, let's first go to where my we can tell humans are right click on this folder right here and show in explorer so it's easier to navigate to that okay so that's uh maconde close i'm gonna save that for now and then i'm gonna go to my meta humans the content folder and i'm gonna copy and paste the common folder so we are replacing the common folder and then replace the files in the destination, okay? And we don't have the Maconde boy, you know, model that we created in the MetaHuman creator, this one right here. So I need to copy that from the other folder as well so that I can add it to my MetaHumans for in my project. So go back, go to, where is it? So MetaHumans and there's Maconde boy. That's the one with the, the new colored or dyed hair. Paste him here. All right, now I can browse up to the top level and start my project in Unreal Engine 4.27. Let's minimize the rest of these. Actually, no, let's bring up the, wait for the project to come in. So it's uh, loading over on this other screen. Sorry about that, but what that's doing. So uh, I'm excited, you know, because now we, we're able to download these uh, new meta humans. Uh, of course, the export settings, make sure you check that. You can access from the edit over there or over down here. And uh, that's how you're gonna be able to check, take, send your characters from Quixel Bridge to Unreal Engine 4.27. And I hope that was helpful. Uh, let me see, can, do I need to import? Click on import. Uh, let me just go ahead and cancel. Let it process, do its thing. All right, so there's my Conde boy over here, and I want to be able to add, got to create a child blueprint. So this process takes a little bit of time, and so I'll probably speed up the video at this point, but uh, let it let it do its thing. All right, now I can create that uh, blueprint child blueprint class. And that's the one that I want to uh, use in my sense. So go to my browser, open that uh, MetaHuman facial animation project, save that, and uh, wait for it to load. A few seconds. And once it's done loading, uh, the, uh, just let the shaders compile real quick. Again, depending on the speed of your machine, this will go really fast or slow. 
And when it's done, now I can go back to, so that's the for, uh, project. I wanna duplicate that, so I don't wanna mess up what I've already <laughs> set up. And then I wanna delete this character right here and replace him with uh, the one, the, the child of Makonde boy. Bring him, just use him as a guide and position him right there. Yes. And now I can go ahead and delete uh, the other one, the Makonde child that was in the scene already. All right, now we'll just go to our camera. No, I just need uh, the meta camera. This one right here. Okay. And then we can switch to lit mode over here and also change the scalability settings. Do that epic. And there he is with his dyed hair inside of the Unreal Engine 4.27. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I hope that was helpful because I struggled man bringing some of my meta humans into uh, the Unreal Engine 4.27. And uh, now that we're able to do it, especially the ones that have been updated, that's gonna help. Now I wanna also do a quick test and see how this character reacts in Faceware Studio. Yeah, because of uh, the update, uh, I'm just curious because I want to know if there's an improvement or not, if any, that is. And so I'll bring, I'm going to fire up uh, uh, Faceware Studio and connect uh, the blueprint so that we can do a quick test on that. Okay. So let's bring up uh, Faceware Studio. And I'm going to use uh, this uh, standing actor. And just turn off our stream to client for now. Make sure it is set to standard and then in real time. So those are the settings that I'm using. It's always preferable to have uh, 60 frames per second, but the original video is 25 frames per second. All right. And so now I need to bring up the live link and en en enable uh, the Faceware live link. That's a new plugin that they've added that is free. Okay. And now it's waiting for that data to come in. It's receiving. All right, and I need to go just make post check, make sure it's faceware live link. Okay, that's the one we need. Then go back to faceware and playback. And you can see it's already, I've already done like a quick tracking and the data is gonna, once it's done, it started streaming in here, make sure that you first of all, go to your plugins and check in, uh, in the install plugins that uh, the Faceware Live link is installed properly, because if it's not, it's not gonna work, okay? And, and then we need to go back to uh, Faceware Studio just to verify that. And then let me go ahead and click on um, the character. And on the boy, the child, okay? And we're gonna do add a live link component so that uh, the animation plays in real time. And then select skeletal light link. All right, and then we're gonna select the face and change the blueprint from face anim to the metahuman faceware live link. Now I already have a tutorial on showing how to set all this up. All right, and then we're gonna select the body as well. Change from animation asset and make it in uh, change it to a blueprint, and then select the Meta human face where live link body blueprint. Okay. And then because right the data is still not coming in just yet, we have to make sure that we go to the streaming panel and enable streaming. All right. And then minimize. Select that. And then we're gonna press uh play. We uh first of all just, just verify, make sure the we have the right blueprints selected. Okay, and this one is playing right here, which is good. Let's first pause for a second and play again, and then press play, and there we go. <laughs> so the character is being animated using data from Festival Studio. And so I mean, it's really cool that uh, these characters are like this. So first of all, you can see that uh, the shadows are not there. The, the problem with the shadows is not on the eyes because there were some artifacts, thing, artifacts that were on the, the, the bottom, like I think eyelash. And so 
it's good to see improvements on this character. And as you can see the purple hair, the way it's looking, uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Again, thank you so much, guys, for joining me today. Today, we're just going through and testing the new MetaHuman uh, version 0 0.5.0. And uh, just making sure that, uh, you know, we test to see how awesome it looks and then put to cinematic and see the quality. And then I'm going to turn on the LSS quality over here and also see what kind of uh, frames a second we can get. But that's because it's a higher setting. That's why you see it dropping every now and then. But uh, again, this is just a quick demo to show you what the characters look like now. And uh, when you, it's time for you to record this uh, facial animation. Of course, it's be, it's preferable to knock it down to a lower, you know, setting before you start recording the animation to, to the tech recorder. And I also just turn off the lighting altogether when I'm doing the final rendering for these uh, meta humans. But uh, it's awesome to see that uh, even the ones that are up updated, they still work with the uh, Faceware Studio. And uh, man, I can't wait to see more clothing added. I that we're desperate for that. <laughs> I'm desperate for more clothing adding, uh, like uh, even things like gloves and glasses and boots and in different accessories and earrings. And it would be so cool if the earrings were actually like dynamic, you know. And like I would like to be able to ha like add. And I mean, I can still add props to these like glasses, but I would want to get glasses that are from the Meta Human Creator, like over there. That would be so cool. You know, so thank you so much again for joining me today. Uh, please stay blessed. Much love to everyone. I'm praying for you. Never give up. As always, dare to dream big. Bye for now.